Hey, I'm Davide and this is Adobe UXP Things You Need to Know. Today I'm talking about Batch Play and the Alchemist plugin as an inspector. This has turned out to be a three-part Batch Play mini-series within the UXP series. In this last part, I will explore the Alchemist plugin as an inspector and then we will recap everything about Batch Play. So let's get to it. The main point of the Alchemist plugin as an inspector is based on the fact that Photoshop stores a lot of information about a variety of different objects, the application, the document, the layer, as descriptors or batch play objects. And you can get those objects and inspect their properties. Something that you would do via the DOM only if those props were available through the DOM. This was also possible in ExtendScript in previous versions of Photoshop, but we had to devise our own custom scripts to inspect those descriptors, and it was a very tedious process in general. The Alchemist plugin makes this extremely easy now. So let's start using it. You see this inspector button here. Let's click this and switch from listener to one of the available objects that you see here. We have the application, document, layer, channel, path, action guide. You see there are a lot of them. History, snapshot, and generator. Let me pick the application first. The property comes by default as not specified. And this means that you are getting the entire application descriptor or batch play object. This is sort of okay if you are in development and you're just exploring things. Not something that you want to do in your production code because getting an entire descriptor is usually time consuming and the best practice is to get just the property that you're interested into. But for now, it's okay for us to get the entire application descriptor. So with that selected here, click add and you see the application listed in the left column and in the content tree view, a long, long, long list of props. Actually, there are even more because some of them are hidden. These are all properties that are available somewhere in the Photoshop preferences dialog, for instance, a very small subset of which are available also through the DOM, but most of them aren't. So let's say that you want to get something very specific, for instance, this color setting, uh, RGB default workspace. Okay, uh, it's there somewhere, but it's really hard to find where unless you want to scroll through like 10,000 lines of JSON code. So one way to work around that is to modify the property that you are interested into. So we said this color setting here. It was sRGB, let's switch to whatever else, Adobe RGB is fine. Let's click OK and let's get yet another application descriptor. So this one, the last one and the previous one are identical except for that property. And now if we shift click them both, so both of them are now selected, we can switch to the difference tab and this is going to highlight the exact object where they differ. So the color settings and in specific the working RGB prop was sRGB, now it's Adobe RGB, okay? So let's now get that. Let me select just one and also in this drop down menu, I have the possibility to get the color setting, all right? So let me add this again and this should return in the content tree just the color setting object. And as you see, it's a very complex object. It contains a lot of all the properties that we're not really interested into. We are after this working RGB thing here. So let's click this pin icon here that is highlighted. And this outputs just the line that we're interested into. But also if you switch to the code tab, you see the actual batch play call that retrieves not the entire descriptor, but only the color setting here, and also gets exactly to the color setting and to the working RGB. So we can just copy this and paste it into the console, and that should give the pinned as Adobe RGB, which is cool. 
Okay, let me clean the console and let's switch back to Photoshop and the layers palette. You see that I have duplicated the background. I have an extra layer here that I've turned yellow. And if you remember in the previous video, we were listening to that color change event. Let's try now to inspect that property. So it's not anymore the application. Uh, we have the layer here and you see that there is one extra drop down for the document. In this case, it's the active document and the layer is the active layer as well. I happen to know that what we are after is the color property that is around here. OK, so now we can add this and we can find the content. So we're not interested in the pinned object anymore. And here is the color object with the enum color and value in this case, yellow color. Also note that this DOM live tab here shows you all the properties that are available through the DOM. So not batch play, but simply the DOM. So in this case, app active document, active layers, square brackets, zero, and then you have the doc ID, the ID, blend mode, and so on and so forth. As you see, color is not one of them. So we will try to get that color property through batch play. So back to the content, I can pin this and in the code, I'm given the exact code that retrieves that property. So let me paste everything in Atom. Let's see the code. So the target object is an array as usual, but this time it contains one, two and three objects. One is the property that we're getting. So this ensures that we're not getting the entire descriptor for the layer, but just the color property. Then we have a reference for the layer and an optional reference for the document. And in this case, the Alchemist plugin substitutes the default ref enum and value. That means the currently active either a layer or document with a reference by ID, which in this case we don't want. So let me rework this. The document is optional. So if we omit this batch play is going to assume that we are working on the currently active document. But for the layer, let's say that it's not by ID, but is the active enum is ordinal. We saw that in the previous video and value is target enum. OK, so this is the code that retrieves the color property of the active layer. We are interested into the color prop that also has a value. So value, this should get us the string. So let me copy everything and paste into the console. So um, it returns a promise and the status is resolved. At this point, the pinned should return yellow color. That's fine. The layer was in fact yellow. So this is one way to get about it. Let's say that you want to create a function as we did in the previous video to wrap this getter. That's not really difficult. Let's switch back to Atom. You can say const get layer color. And this is equal to a function. Let's not make this an asynchronous function. Let's make it synchronous. So I want to move all that into the body of the function. I'm not awaiting for batch play, but I will make this synchronous. So this is true. And also I need to return this result color value. OK, so let me copy this, switch back to the console that I've cleaned and paste it. We should get nothing, which is OK. And at this point, I can get layer color and call this function and I get yellow color, which is OK. It's not too much elegant. Hey, it works. But if you remember in the previous video, we were using the prototype of the layer object to extend it with a custom method. And we can do the same with a proper getter here. So let's try to do this. There are probably several ways to do this. The one that I prefer is using the object dot define property. And this accepts the object that we want to extend, which in this case is require Photoshop. 
and then the app, the native object, which is a layer, and then the prototype. Okay, this is the first parameter. Then we have to specify which property we want to add. And in this case is the color. And with define property, we can here add an object that has a get property, which in this case is the getter function, fat arrow function. And I can move this call here inside it. So this way, let me get rid of get layer color. So the define property accepts three parameters. The first one is the object that we are extending. So the prototype of the layer, and we're adding this color prop and an object with a getter. The getter is using batch play to get this property and it returns it. Okay. So let me copy this and get back to the UXP dev tool, paste. This happens because this is a constant and you cannot redeclare it. So one quick way to get around this is to refresh the Alchemist plugin and the console. So control or command R, this clears the memory. So I also can clear this and paste everything back. So we have no errors. And at this point, I can say something like require, I should already have it. This line is okay, I am getting the color. So I'm getting it via the app active document active layer, zero index and the color, this should trigger the getter, that is to say this function that calls the batch play. So let's see if this works. We have yellow color, super cool. But let's make one step further. Let's treasure the experience of the previous video part two, and let's create a complete getter and setter for the color using the define property method of the object class. So very quickly, because you are already experienced into that, let's switch to the listener. And I want to change this color here. Let's make it red. This records the batch play code that I can copy and paste in Atom here as a reference. So the only thing that I need to do is to create a setter besides the getter. So let's add a set here. And this is a function. And in there, I'm going to copy all this. I don't need the pinned anymore. So let me get rid of that. Also this line and the setter just calls batch play. Again, this is going to be a synchronous call. So let's get rid of the await and don't forget to put true here. Of course, being a setter, you must be able to input a parameter, which in this case is the color. So let me substitute this strings here with color. Okay. So let me um, beautify the code. Hopefully this is going to work. So let me copy everything, switch back to the console that is clean. Let me refresh command or control R just to be sure that everything is pristine. Let me paste this and it doesn't show any error, which is usually a good sign. So let me show Photoshop. The layer is now red in the console. I should be able to say something like require Photoshop. I shouldn't have it here. So I can either use the getter, which in this case should return red. Okay. But also the setter. So at this point, if I assign something else like yellow color, it should hopefully turn that layer into yellow. And it does. Isn't that nice? So with this object defined property, you are able to extend the layer prototype with a getter and a setter and basically create pieces of missing DOM on your own. One last thing that I want to show you is the possibility to customize the history palette string. I'm talking about uh, this thing here, this color change. I'm using this setter as an example, but you can use it with whatever batch play call that you want. So the trick is to add a history state info property. 
And by the way, you can use either the um, quote syntax or without the quote. So let's keep the quote for consistency. And this history state info is an object that has a name prop. And this is the string that you want to use. And in this case, let's say something like, hey, I'm changing color. Okay. And then a reference for the target. So you must have a target. And this is a target in the batch play kind of flavor. So this thing here. Not the layer ordinal target enum, but the document ordinal target enum. Because we are acting on this very document, so it makes sense to target the document's history. Okay, so let me copy this again back to the Photoshop, the console. Let's refresh. You see that the Alchemist plugin flashes, which means that it has refreshed. Let's clean the console and paste that. Uh, hit return, and now I can run the very same line of before. It's not yellow color because it is now yellow, let's say red. And you see that it says, hey, I'm changing color, right? And the color has changed. So you have this possibility, which is very nice. By the way, with ExtendScript, we had something called the suspend history method, which was a DOM method. Uh, there's nothing similar here in UXP yet. The team is working on something. In the meantime, you can use the history state info for batch play, which work pretty fine. And especially when you have multiple descriptors or objects in the batch play array, it groups them under one history state. Okay, let's bring this random cat from the internet back to recap everything that we have covered about batch play so far. First, we have seen how each interaction with the Photoshop UI triggers events that carry payloads. And you can listen to those events and grab the code, which is batch play code, and reuse it in your own scripts. In this video, we have also seen how besides listening, we can also inspect those descriptors or batch play objects and use them to get precious information that are outside the scope of the DOM. You can also use batch play to extend the DOM with custom getters and setters. Finally, you can use custom history state strings that group batch play steps. Let me tell you that batch play and action manager are more an art than a science, so it's okay if you feel uncomfortable at first but with the Alchemist plugin, which is a great addition to the UXP toolset, you're going to get to speed very, very quickly. So thanks again to Yaroslav Beresa for this wonderful tool. Thank you all for following along. Thanks to everyone who has donated. There is a link either in the YouTube description or in my website. As you know, I also have products in the Photoshop marketplace. I don't yet know what I will cover in the next video. Probably something simpler like the Spectrum CSS. We'll see. Thank you for watching. Bye.